Welcome to the Dissecting the Wisdom of Shultazar Episodes. My name is Jeffrey Eisen. I'm a spiritual life coach, the channeler of Shultazar, and an energy intuitive. In these episodes, my collaborator and friend Mark Lane and I will be picking a particular message in each episode that we will be reviewing, having a conversation about, and dissecting the wisdom from. The messages from Shaltazar are very high level master teachings, and it is key to peel them away, dissect them, comment on them, and discuss them in order to get the greatest value. We hope you'll be intrigued, we're confident you'll learn, and we know you will benefit. And welcome back to another episode of Dissecting the Wisdom of Shaltazar with my good friend and collaborator, Mark Lane. Welcome back, Mark. Hi, Jeffrey. Good to be here. It is good to be here. It is good to be here. We're a few days away from the hunter's full moon, the end of a month, and it feels up in Canada. I know we talked a bit about the weather, so we're not going to do that this week, but it does feel like it's the end of a season and we're in a transition period. So I don't know about you, but I'm feeling some real transformation energy out there. And uh, I hope that transformation goes well for you and me and all of our listeners. Yes, I do as well. Blessings to all. For sure, for sure. I am excited to hear the topic that you have for us today. Great. So, past couple of weeks, we've dug into some pretty deep topics and explored some deep ideas. This week, as we are kind of approaching Halloween, I thought it might be fun to do something that's a little bit, a uh, little bit lighter with Halloween and the uh, iconic ideas of ghosts and uh, skeletons and things like that. And this kind of ties into what you just said about the change in the seasons. From my point of view, I've always kind of looked at Halloween as a uh, focus of death within Halloween. I've always kind of looked at it as kind of a death of the summer or the waning of, you know, as life sort of drains from the planet. You know, we live in a northern climate where the, uh, the trees change and everything goes dormant. And so I've kind of always looked at Halloween as sort of a celebration of that transition, that entrance into dormancy of the life that is in nature. And so kind of the the next logical step in all of that is to talk about the unseen world and, you know, what we consider the uh, world beyond the veil, I guess, which is where Shaltazar exists and several of the other uh, spiritual entities who like to communicate with us. And so that's kind of my topic wow. for the day. Neat topic. Neat topic. Not, you know, it's interesting because we've sort of, I'm not sure what the word is, minimized it, uh, you know, when we talk about ghosts and goblins and, you know, to me, the word ghost doesn't really resonate because it tends to be something a bit scarier. For me, the invisible world is doesn't have the darkness to it. It, it has all light. It has all love. And so I think it's a really neat topic. And it's kind of fascinating how we've taken Halloween and sort of made that the ghost and goblin and the invisible world a little bit scarier. I'm hoping that we do keep this a little bit light and realize that that invisible world is is our greatest asset. And my life has certainly changed since I was able to connect with the invisible world. Now, you know, if you flash back 15 or 20 years, I did not believe in an invisible world. I did not believe in anything beyond the physical world. And by believing in that unseen world and being fortunate enough to connect to it, it has changed my life in a big way. And so I encourage listeners to begin to examine the possibilities of connecting with that invisible world behind the veil, I think you will find that there is some great assistance for us in these very difficult and challenging times. Right, right. I was doing some reading and I don't remember what I was reading. It could have been, uh, I've been kind of digging into some of the cryon parables and stories. And there was a comment made that if you could see the number of cosmic beings or invisible friends that are surrounding you every moment of every day, you'd never feel alone. And that kind of stuck with me because 
I think we all have a sense of that presence that we can't see, that we can't touch, that we can't necessarily speak directly to, but which seems to be with us and that seems to be, you know, whispering to us and giving us guidance and helping show us which way to go and which way to turn and, you know, informing some of the decisions we make. And I guess I, I find it kind of comforting and I'd like to expand my contact and expand my understanding of, of who's there and have better, clear communication with them and all those sorts of things, I guess. Excellent. 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 And it's interesting that you bring up this topic because um, I am going to be doing some Insight Timer live events in the next coming weeks and months. Mm -hmm. And one of the topics that I want to do on a live series on Insight Timer is learning how to communicate with the invisible world. So this is really a timely chat. One of the first things I would say, and of course, you're very psychic because you have brought up this topic and that's really great. So one of the things I would encourage to listeners is to let go of your perception that the unseen world, the non-duality world operates like we do. I think that's the first thing, because when you think of communicating, you and I are communicating, there are certain rules of engagement in that communication. You know, the first one is that we have a language and in order for us to talk freely, we both speak the same language. And if you were speaking in Spanish and I was speaking in English and you didn't understand English, and I didn't understand Spanish, it would be a little bit more difficult. And so, you know, often when we begin to communicate with the invisible world, we think that they're going to be speaking our language to us. And I don't believe that is the case. I do not believe that the invisible world speaks a language. The communication we have to the invisible world is sensory. It's really a sensory communication. There are four main pathways, and I'm not sure whether you or the listeners have heard of clairvoyant, clairaudient, clairsentient, or claircognizant. But those are the four major pathways. A clairvoyant tends to communicate with the invisible world in a visionary way. That doesn't mean they necessarily see, but they will get visions. They could get a vision of a light. They could get a vision of an airplane. They could get a vision of a lattice, you name it. And those visions are the sensory communication. The clairaudience will hear things. And it's not like they necessarily hear a voice, but they will somewhat of a voice in their head. The clairsentient gets a feeling. And we've often heard the person that says, oh, you know, the hairs in the back of my neck stand up. Well, that is a feeling that they are getting in their communication to that invisible world. And the claircognizant gets a knowing. It's just a knowingness. It is said, and I believe that to be true, that all of us have one major pathway that is our strength. And although we can tap into the other pathways. My major pathway is claircognizant. When I communicate with Shaltazar, I just get a knowingness. I don't know where it comes from, but it's really a strong knowingness. I will every once in a while get a feeling and sometimes I get a vision. When I'm working with someone, I'll get a vision of someone in a prison cell or a bird flying away. And so these sensory downloads, so to speak, are the beginning of that communication. And I will go on to say that I believe that there are three steps to communicating with that invisible world. That is the download I just talked about, the sensory download. The second step is the translation or transcription. In other words, turning that feeling into words or language. And so when I mm -hmm. channel Shaltazar, I get this knowingness and the words that come out of my mouth are really my translation, what I think. And anybody that communicates with the unseen world, any channelers, they definitely have to go through their own filter. So the words that come out are based on my vocabulary. I mean, there are some people that will channel in tongues, and, and that means they will just channel in a language that they have never spoken before. I haven't come across too many of those people. But in my case, I am taking that knowingness that is coming through me and putting it into words. The third step which I think is the most complicated and complex and really an art form, is the interpretation. 
For example, in some of the religious doctrine where the masters have channeled from the invisible world, they bring forth the translation or transcription, and then people, including the channeler, will study and dissect and unravel and decode and demystify and try to interpret that. And that's where some of the religious doctrine comes from, that interpretation of what the channel message is. Now, I know I've thrown a lot of stuff at does any of it make sense? It all makes sense. It's uh, you know, we, we have discussed those different modalities of connecting. And yeah, it is an unspoken, unheard sort of a language, I guess, that is how you know the other side communicates with us. You know, I think I'm fortunate in our communication that I also speak Canadian. So, uh, <laughs> Well, I appreciate that. That makes it a lot easier for me. You know, I think kind of what we do together, what we are doing together is sort of a uh, an interesting synergy between those different modalities because you're able to channel the messages. You, as you said, you kind of transcribe them into your own words. I then write about my interpretation of what the messages are to kind of give perhaps a different spin or at least my spin on how the wisdom impacts me. And then we have, you know, these podcasts we do where we talk about it, which kind of brings in another kind of energy into it because I think, you know, as we're having these conversations, we're both almost kind of channeling a little bit and, you know, kind of letting spirit guide the conversation and bring out, you know, more information or or different perspectives on the information. So it's kind of really a fascinating process. It is. It is. And what you say really brings to mind the interpretation because your articles and impressions for Shaltazar, our podcast called the one that we're now doing, Dissecting the Wisdom of Shaltazar, and we're soon to be doing another series called On Unraveling Shaltazar. These are all the interpretations. And I like to say that when the unseen world communicates with us, it's like a treasure hunt. It is not a definitive 10 step process of things you have to do. I often find that I get a message today and I sort of do it and not knowing what's going to be next. And in a few days, I get something else and it's like, oh, okay, that message I got a few days ago now makes sense. So making sure that you surrender and you allow is really important. And the interpretation takes a lot of reflection and ruminating. It's really, really important to take that time. So you're absolutely right. The stuff that we're doing, the podcast that we're doing, the writing that you are doing is definitely part of that interpretation. However, I will say that your writing is also a form of the channeling. You get a download and you are able to turn it into the written word because I know and I've worked with you long enough. This is isn't a left brain writing that you do. This is a sense you get. And in my case, I take that sense and put it into the spoken word. And in your case, you put it into the written word. And having said that, in the beginning, I did channel Shaltazar very much in the written word. It was in my handwritten journal. So the key, I think, for the listeners, my advice is practice by starting to get into a more relaxed state. Shaltazar says that you cannot hear the invisible world when there's too much chatter going on in your mind. So for me, you know, one of the major purposes of meditation is letting go of the obsessive mind, because if the obsessive mind is there, you're not going to be that open portal to get messages from the invisible world. And I will suggest to you that it might be easier than you think, as long as you don't try. Every once in a while, people will say, oh, I got a sense that I should get in touch with a Uh, Bill. And next thing you know, Bill sends them a text or I should really call whoever and you get a phone call from that person. That is, I believe, the invisible world communicating with us, that there are these waves. And it's easy for us to realize this in today's modern world. We all have cell phones and we are getting text and we are getting videos and we are getting phone calls. And yet we don't really see how that comes in to our smart device or our smartphone, okay? It is traveling through the waves and the same waves that will send a phone call or send a text or send an email are the same waves that allow us to connect behind the veil. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like they're, um, I've heard explained this way that they're always talking, but we're not always listening. 
And we can't hear them when our mind is actively chattering. I mean, you know, mental chatter is noisier than their voice. And so we have to stop that noise that's going on in our head in order for them to make the connection and allow us to hear them. And meditation is the most effective way, I guess, or the only way I know of to stop that mental chatter and allow the, the signals to come through and to register. And like you said, it doesn't always happen instantaneously. You might not get like a clear sense of this kind of communication as it's happening, but a couple hours later, you might go, hmm, I just feel like I should do this. A good point. If anyone is listening to our podcast, our episode, if you've got someone behind you talking in a loud voice and chattering and trying to get your attention, you probably won't be hearing what we're saying. And I think that's exactly what Mark is explaining is that chatter, that outside chatter prevents a strong connection. I will also say that the way we connect to the unseen world is very, very subtle. Sometimes, you know, when I work with people, if you get a color, if you get a name, sometimes it's a sound. I find it so interesting to listen to people and say, I can't connect, I can't connect. And I get them to, you know, close their eyes and take a deep breath and just allow whatever comes into your mind to come up right away. And then I ask them, okay, please just tell me the first thing that pops into your mind. And they do. And it's like, whoa, that's profound. And it's like, what do you mean? <laughs> and they don't realize that, that they have made connection. So it's that subtle. It really, really is that subtle. And so I'm going to ask you, Mark, close your eyes. Okay. I'm going to put okay. you on the spot. Take a deep <laughs> breath, clear the mind chatter. And just allow whatever comes through to come through. Could be a word, a sound, a sentence. Okay. And stay, Shultazar says, just beyond the nothingness lies great riches. So if your mind comes up and tries to give you the message, just let it go. Ask your mind to stand down and just wait for something that feels more divine to come through you. You know, what came through was a hug. Mm, beautiful. I just felt uh, something just kind of wrapped around my shoulders. And I think the message was, it's all good. So Yeah, it's all good. It's all good. You are loved. Excellent. Thank you so much, because that really helps, hopefully, the listeners understand the subtlety of this. Sometimes, you know, we're looking for something really complicated and complex. Now, what I suggest is the more we do this, the deeper and the broader the communication will be. So if you are satisfied with that hug as an initial communication that it's all good, it's all going to be fine, then you'll be able to build on it. Okay, We're running a bit short on time, but I just want to end with this story. In one of the messages from Shaltazar, the example they use of being able to connect with the unseen world or the invisible world, they do a little bit of a story or an analogy, and they say it's that you were born as one part of twins, half of twins. And so there's an identical twin that is born at the same time you are. But that twin is separated at birth and taken away to a different planet, is taken away to a different galaxy, even a different universe where things are very, very different. And your twin is raised in that energy, in that culture, in that way of being. And you continue to be raised here on Earth. At some time in the distant future, you realize that you have this twin and, you know, your parents tell you that that twin is somewhere else and you have this yearning to communicate with that twin. And so you are able to make contact, but of course that twin does not speak the language you do. That twin does not speak a language. It comes, you know, from a civilization, a higher powered civilization where there's teleporting and where there's communication without words. And because because your desire, because this twin is family, you really, really want to make an effort to begin a relationship and communication. And thus, the two of you figure out a way to communicate. And that's what communicating beyond the veil is all about. I remember a movie that I watched where the aliens communicated in symbols. The lead in it was able to take the symbols and interpret them. So play with that part of you that has been here many times before and reconnect, even though you don't have the commonality of language. Right. Yeah. Right. Wow. Fabulous topic. 
I love it, Mark. Boy, that came out of nowhere. Didn't see that one coming. I appreciate it. And of course, <laughs> it is so timely because in the near future on Insight Timer, I will be doing these live and we'll be talking exactly like this. I will invite the listeners to submit their comments and their questions because it is my greatest desire to allow more of the planet to be able to communicate. It certainly has changed my life. I highly recommend that we begin having that communication with that loving family member that is behind the veil that is waiting to help us in these difficult and challenging times. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Be assured that they are there, that there are, as I said, a room full of invisible beings around you right now that only have love for you and only have your best interest uh, at heart. And uh, if we can kind of let go of our fears and our need to control what's going on around us in this physical realm and let them kind of take the lead, our lives will be, I think, much improved. Couldn't have said it better myself. Thank you so much, Mark. Any last word? I think your last words were fabulous just the way they were. So on that note, I thank you for the topic. I thank you for the phenomenal conversation and I bid love and light to you all.